Now, occupational structure. Division of the people into different categories basing on their occupations is known as occupational structure. So, the occupational structure has again three bifurcations here basing on the de de uh, departments or the sectors where they are working. For example, if they are working in the agriculture, fishing, mining, these all come under the category of the primary. When they are working in the industrial and the manufacturing sectors, they come under secondary. When they are working in any service oriented sectors, they come under territory sector. So now, the population is completely categorized basing on their works into three major categories. But when do we call a country, a developed country or a developing country determines on the percentage of the people working in different sectors. For example, India is a developing country because in India we have 64 percentage of people working in the primary sector while 13 to 20 percent of the people are engaged in secondary and the tertiary sector. So, in a country where the maximum number of people are working in the secondary and the territory sector, that country is called a developed nation. For example, let us take United States of America. In United States of America, the percentage of people working in the primary sector are 3 to 5 percent. Well, the rest will be, be working in the secondary or the tertiary sector. In the similar way, when it is quite opposite to India. In India, we have 65 to 70 percent people working under primary sector, whereas the secondary and the territory sector comprise of only 20 to 30 percent. That's why United States of America is a developed nation, while India is still a developing country. So, basing on the works of the people also, the future and the determination of the country determines. In the international standards, India is still considered as a developing country because India's large population is engaged in agriculture which falls under the category of primary sector. So that's what the occupational structure also plays a vital role in determining the country's development, progress and understanding whether a country is a developed country or a developing country. Health. Health is a serious concern because it affects the process of development. If a person is not healthy, if he is not fit and fine to work, this disturbs the work of the other people also. Because everybody's work is interconnected with the other person's work. For example, in an office, if the lawyer clerk doesn't work, the above officer who is relying on the work of the clerk gets disturbed. The above officer who is working on his subordinates work will get disturbed. So it's a chain which is connected that gets completely disturbed when people are unhealthy and when they do not perform their work properly. So that will directly influence the development of any particular nation. So government efforts are being very sincere and the sustained efforts of the government have proved very effective. When we look at the statistics, it is very clear. The death rates were earlier 1000, for every 1000 they were 25, while they have fall down to 8.1 for every 1000. And the life expectancy increased from 36.7 in 1951 to 64.6. It was a tremendous achievement. Even though government has achieved a lot and government has increased the medical facilities reachable to many thousands of people. Many dispensaries, many primary healthcare centers are being established. Still in India, health has been a major concern because the safe drinking water and the basic amenities are not available to more than two thirds of the rural population. And per calorie consumption in India still is below the recommended rate which resulted in the malnutrition of the population. So safe drinking water, basic amenities per calorie consumption are still not up to the required level and only one third of the rural population are able to access to the safe drinking water. So these all are the serious concerns which serious problems 
हैव टू बी टैकल्ड विद द परफेक्ट पॉलिसी प्लान सो दैट ऑल दीज प्रॉब्लम्स आर बीन इराडिकेटेड फ्रॉम आवर कंट्री नाउ द एडोलसेंट पॉपुलेशन इंडिया ग्रेटेस्ट सिग्निफिकेंट फीचर इज दैट इंडिया हैज वन फिफ्थ ऑफ द एंटायर टोटल पॉपुलेशन कमिंग अंडर द कैटेगरी ऑफ एडोलसेंट पॉपुलेशन वॉट इज दिस एडोलसेंट पॉपुलेशन ग्रुप The group of age from 10 to 19 years is known as adolescent population, who are the very very important resource for any country because they are the future citizens or the working population who contribute a large for the nation, for the growth of the nation. We can have scientists, engineers, doctors coming from that particular groups. So, this particular group people have to be fit, fine, and healthy for any nation to develop. but when it comes to the concerns the nutritional requirements are very high to this group people when compared to the other groups of the people so this group people required high nutritional food in practicality in india we don't have that much of the nutritional foods available to the people of this age group and especially in girls many of the girls in india are suffering with anemia where the girls of 9 10 to 19 years of age are not getting the complete nutritional food which is required as per their age requirement which affects the girls to many serious confrontations and also we have to create awareness to the people especially to the parents of the girls child that they need to be provided with good nutritional food so that we can have healthy children in future and we should they should be first healthy then only the nation will be automatically healthy by getting healthy children in future so the major serious concern is that adolescent population should be getting high nutritional food when compared to the other aged group people so national population policy government of india has taken a comprehensive family planning program after the efforts all were culminated the national population policy came into force with the efforts of the government of india since from 1952 they are planning to have a healthy family and also to have voluntarily parenthood taking the proper care of their children so this policy came into existence in 2000 where it has brought certain rules and regulations which are to be implemented strictly and followed by all people what are those among them the important are free and compulsory education for the children up to 14 years of age which creates awareness for the children of their rights and duties and the infant mortality rate has to be reduced from 30 per 1000 births which are happening in our country to very low level and to acquire or to attain universal immunization for the children because the polio drops campaigning programs smallpox campaigning programs all are initiated to have healthy society in future and they also targeted the girls who are facing lot of problems because they are getting married at the age of adolescence where actually they need lot of healthy food at that point of time which is very rich in the nutritional value but they are not given that but still they are forced to get married so the marriage to the girls has to be delayed so that they acquire certain physical fitness for them to remain healthy in the process of bearing their children and also the adolescents was a main target of the government through this policy they wanted to create awareness among the adolescent age group that the unwanted pregnancies or the sexually transmitted diseases all these risks have to be reduced means the adolescent group has to be created awareness for that that this should not be done this is a problem when we do this kind of things so when this awareness was created in the people and also not only just putting it in the place of laws and the law books they also tried to give nutritional food through service organizations and to stop the child marriages before the age of 18 for the girls and giving legal assistance for that one to stop all these things because government already identified that the people are the most valuable resource of any nation and they provide the potential power of any nation to grow 
and to have a sustainable development so a population of any nation is the most valuable resource which knows how to utilize the other natural resources very effectively and this gives a potential power to any nation to have proper development leading to the growth of a nation into a normal developing nation to a developed nation that is the reason why population in social sciences has a very very important and valuable place if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus